Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to just do a quick check-in, energy-wise. Um, spirit would be great if we could probably even assess some of these retrogrades. <laughs> or a lot. Okay, hold on, let me see what we got going on. For those that don't know, all right, I had to make a little cheat sheet. We did start the pre-shadow side of New Moon and Libra, okay? I believe that was today. Let's see. Yes, that was today. Okay, had to check. But we also have Chiron retrograding in Aries. Um, the post-shadow side won't end until next year, okay? So that goes until pretty much, what, a couple days after Christmas? So we're still doing Chiron. Neptunes and Retro and Pisces, we're still going to be doing that pretty much up until Christmas. Saturn's retrograding in Pisces as well. That actually ends in November, but the shadow side will be, for those in the United States, it would be like right before Thanksgiving. We also have the 1010 portal, which we're still in. It'll actually be peaking tomorrow, which is great. Tens are all about endings, okay? Um, its shadow side ends on the 24th of the month. So this week we'll definitely have that energy as well. We also have Uranus retrograde. I forget which sign it's in. My apologies. There's so many of these. <laughs> if I can find that information, I'll do that for next week, okay? Jupiter retrograde is in Taurus. That would keep going until the end of the year, pretty much. And then we have the shadow side of Samhain, which actually doesn't actually start its pre-shadow until next week sometime, the 15th, okay? And lastly... We're still in Pluto retrograde, although it's in Capricorn now, I believe. So it should be ending tomorrow, but we'll still have post energy, post shadow until the 24th. Okay. So there's a lot going on. See how that might affect you. Check your charts and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, it really just depends. Most of them are all outer planets. So a lot of divine energy is making changes right now. People will be, you know, feeling it. Um, especially those that haven't had their awakenings yet, okay, or at least are at the very beginning, or have apparently Pisces, Aries, Taurus, and whatever Uranus is, like heavy in their outer planets, okay? So there's lots of transformation energy, a lot of endings, new beginnings, a lot of karma coming back around, Saturn deals with that, Uranus also deals with awakenings as well, so it'll affect those people as well. So just know that that's external energy to you, or if you're going through it, uh, there are tools and helpful stuff. I have a lot here that I've shared from my journey over the last few years. You're welcome to peruse that. Okay. So today I'm just going to go ahead and pull and use all our Halloween -y type of stuff. Cause I'm so excited about that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is pull the overall energy from the Halloween Oracle. Okay. That's by Stacy DeMarco. And I do have deck reviews of every one of these. So if you like these decks, check that out. And then you'll be able to find them a little better. See if you like the deck, okay? I'm also going to maybe clarify whatever Gypsy Witch comes out. We're just going to do a tiny little spread for each of the signs. Just to get an idea of what's happening this week. And then maybe a little clarification from the fortune telling. And if I have to pull a little extra to find out more from the Rock and Roll Tarot, okay? As well as pre-guidance from the Sante Muerte Oracle. And that is by Fabio Lestrani. Um, and then final guidance from the Samhain Oracle. This is our new deck, Seasons of the Witch Samhain Oracle by Lorraine Anderson and Juliet Diaz. Okay. So I'll go ahead and get myself all set up here. And I will timestamp and put those in the description box for you guys. Okay. Mm. All right, spirit of the highest white light, I command the truth. Honest answers only for the collective's highest and greatest, most loving good. Thank you. Love you so much. All right. Aries. We'll start with Aries at 438. Okay. There, let's start with this deck. Overall energy for Aries, please. Sun, moon, uprising energy this week what they should know this week please and thank you okay. 
All right, you have mummy with change here. All right, something's going to change. Bear with, I haven't used this deck in a year. <laughs> Some things I still remember, but I know there's more to this card than that. Change is inevitable, and that no matter how hard you try, things will not be preserved exactly the same way. The card also indicates this, this change will be for the better. The endings, the closed doors, the barriers, this is all just a healthy pause and an indication that a change of tactics is needed. You are not cursed. You have just developed a pattern. You can take control and change it. So something has had a pattern. Maybe it's time to change it because it's become stagnant. Let's start actually with the fortune telling cards to see what it might be pertaining to. All right. I did this earlier. <laughs> Forgot to. Sorry, Aries. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done one of these. All right. What's this pertaining to? What change? What's changing? What's changing? What's happening? Commitment. A commitment is indicated around love or business. Okay. It will make you feel better. Whatever this change is, it will be for the positive, either with love or business. Okay. All right. Let's figure out what's going on here for Aries spirit. There you are, okay. That could be your energy or another fire sign that you're dealing with, specifically a female. All right, we have the four of pentacles with the dog here, number 27, breaks down to a nine. Queen of wands with wine here, number 40, breaks down to a four. Ooh, there's your coupling. Okay, king of wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy. This is definitely a couple here. With the bear, number 50, breaks down to a five. Okay. Let me see here. This could be a friendship with the dog here. True friends. That's all this card is. All right. Dog could be significant as well for you or bear as well. Personal identifiers. Maybe they remind you as a big old teddy bear. Um... There seems to be some sort of lack feeling here with the four of pentacles. And it could just be the energy maybe feels stagnant, right? And maybe whatever's going on in this connection needs to step it up a notch. And I'm seeing here with the wine, which is a, a symbol of cheerful and cheerfulness and gaiety. So maybe go have a good time, spice things up a little bit in this connection, okay? This could be, you know, a platonic business partnerships, so maybe a coworker or a colleague or something, right? And maybe, you know, the energies felt a little weird between you two, or you're worried about that. That could be that as well, okay? This would be a good time maybe just to go out and have, you know, a night out. Maybe not for literal drinks, unless that's your that's y'all's thing, but maybe a barbecue or something really chill, right? You also have the bear, which is a sign of su successful speculation <laughs> as well here, okay? So maybe you suspected that maybe you want to do something nice. Maybe their birthday's coming up or a special occasion or something. Maybe treat them. Or maybe they're suspected to do that for you, okay? Go with it because this is definitely a positive change, okay? And it will make you feel better. And being that this is also Juan's energy too, this could be a creative endeavor, you know, like maybe you're going to take an art class together or something and have fun, right? All right. Oh, wouldn't that be funny if the art card came out? Let's see. <laughs> card number 14, again with the five. Definitely something changing in this connection, all right? For the good. All right, and this is Goddess Chalchiliquay. I'm always going to botch these names. Goddess of the waters, lakes, seas, and sailors, as well as the goddess of beauty and fertility. She reminds us of how development and progress can only be possible if we view life as a benevolent river, a moving event, and not something static. 
the flow expressed by love, which if understood and allowed to run, allows Chalchilikwe to bring beauty and ardor instead of lightning and storms. Do not fight against the flow you are in, so go with the flow, okay? A river cannot be tamed with force. You must surrender to its current and use its strength as if it were your own, okay? So whatever this is, it's good. Just go with it. Maybe it's a surprise, right? A surprise idea or something completely off the cuff, right? If they're surprising you or you want to surprise them, it sounds like you are going to get surprised. <laughs> Final guidance spirit from the Silent Oracle. Let's get one good old bridge shuffle on this as well. All right. Silence, number 36. I've gotten this card a lot lately. It's about just having a moment of stillness and being in the present moment, essentially. So definitely go with the flow and be in the present moment with this, okay? 36 breaks down to a 9. There's more to this card, I know, though. Let's see. There we are. The world moves at such an alarming rate. Sitting inside a coffee shop, you can hear sirens, cars, construction, people talking and moving. When you seek the quiet of dawn, when the earth is still unmuted, so dawn might be significant, maybe or first thing in the morning, cup of coffee before work, there is a presence in the silence. There is space to fill it with the sound of your voice and the beat of your heart. This is a space where all of creation is free to roam wild. Stillness is the presence of nothing and the potential for everything. Take this opportunity to be still. This card is a reminder to spend time each day to clear your mind. The answer to your question will come when you stop searching, allowing the solution to be presented to you. There is no need to rush, even if you think you must. Remove your expectations of the situation that you're thinking about. Give, up, give this up to silence the nothingness. Spirit will take your query and answer when the time is right, so you'll know. Your intuition will definitely tell you what's up when it's about to happen and you'll be ready for it. I like it. I'm kind of curious to know what happens this week. <laughs> Have a good one, Aries. Bye. <laughs> All right, Taurus. Let's see what's going on with you. Overall energy for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Spirit, please and thank you. All right, you have night song, hidden talents. Speak your truth, use your voice. This could be a talent speaking, public, having to do with speaking or singing, okay? To kind of get out of yourself, all right? Let's see, something to do with that. Vocalization, that's the word I'm thinking of, all right. Or maybe there has something to do with listening, right? something that is spoken. Commitment. Aries just got this too. A commitment is indicated around love or business. It'll make you feel better. So maybe listening or speaking truth in that kind of situation. All right, what's going on? Spirit from the Gypsy Witch. Three cards, please. All right, five of wands with the clover here. 33 might be significant. Could be good news. Threes are about good news. Protected good news. Six of wands. There's going to be some sort of victory in this with the lightning card here. It might be surprising. 43 breaks down to a seven. Definitely faded and luck for you. And we do have progression here with five to six. And it's something you've wanted with this nine of, nine of cups here. All right, wish fulfillment. 
16 breaks down to a 7. Again, you have two 7s. 3s and 7s might be significant to you at this time. Let's see here. Okay. 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 All right. The clover leaf is a bearer of good tidings. And it does seem like there's a lot of people involved with the five of wands here. I know that's usually a conflict, but I'm feeling more like just a group activity. Why does this look like a cruise to me? <laughs> that would be gay. That would be joyous and, you know, sing-songy and lots of music, right? And you do have the ship here, so... Um, this could be surrounding some sort of special occasion where there's a lot of people showing up. Maybe these are individuals that you would have been worried about having conflict, but I'm seeing it's going to be victorious and happy and joyous. So maybe be surprising in that way. Okay. Clover is a bearer of good tidings. Lightning denotes surprise. It's in the center, so it seems like it's good. And the ship is a symbol of wit riches. It also foretails a voyage. So maybe there's some sort of change in a dynamic, a group dynamic. Okay. I'm going to pull a little extra on this one. Tell me more, Spirit. For Taurus. Okay. Definitely something has transformed here. Okay. Definitely a change. That's Scorpio energy. You could be dealing with Scorpio. Four of Cups. And Page of Pentacles. Definitely good news. Okay. That's Aries, Taurus, Gemini energy as well. So you could be dealing with any one of those signs as well. Or that it could just be you. I think there's some sort of change of... Um, Change of idea. <laughs> That's immediately what I was thinking. <laughs> or maybe it's a need to change idea because you have some good news coming in that will change your idea of a situation, a group of people. Maybe something you've spoken about or need to speak on. Hmm. I like it. I like it. This week, spirit. All right. Tell me more. Guidance going forward with this situation. How should Taurus proceed? This energy feels really good. I'm, I wouldn't be too worried. It feels good. 31. I do believe that's celebration. Oh, love it. It is. Take action while constantly bearing the past in mind. So don't just forgive and forget, right? You just remember, forgive and release. So whatever this conflict had been in the past, it may be resolvable now, right? You just can't hold on to anything from the past. But still, speak your truth, okay? Be honest to yourself. Be true to yourself, okay? Night Song does talk about that. Um, maybe there's something you're going to learn about this situation that sort of flips your thought or idea about who whichever party in this five of five of wands okay that has been troublesome for you okay it's definitely good news i like that <laughs> talk about change of ideas how funny so take action while constantly bearing the past in mind without being afraid of having to change your ideas even drastically <laughs> celebration is in close contact with memory and it incites us to celebrate life and the deserved results we obtain, which belong to, to us as much as they belong to those who came before us, our ancestors, and the people with whom we collaborate as expressed by the fraternity card. 
As the tree that renews itself but keeps its roots, we must always have the courage to renew our ideas while maintaining the principles that have guided us and that were passed on to us by our ancestors. So you could be dealing with family. This could be a family situation since we're talking ancestors. Those would be the, ans the living ancestors, right? All right, final guidance for Taurus spirit. <laughs> Everything just flies around. All right. There we go. Number 43 breaks down to seven. You got 43 twice here. 43 might be significant. Age, door number, part of your social, phone number, address, something like that. It does break down to a seven, so that could be life path number as well. Grab hold, allow the dwelling fire within belly, awaken all that is. A mere glimpse a delicate pull at the very roots living in the alchemy of self. All right, let me get there. Still learning this deck, bear with. All about wisdom and alchemy. When the witch appears, believe that you are wiser than you know, and the thousands of years of wisdom from the wise ancient ones are available to you now. If you're finding your path to magic, this card is confirmation that you should continue to explore craft. If you are an experienced witch, know that it's time to dig even deeper. Perhaps step up as a priestess and start your own coven. This message is even strong. Okay, we haven't pulled that card. Okay. You are the center of this card, your energy, your strength, your wisdom. A witch taps into the healing powers of the earth and the wisdom of powers that be as well as the energy within us all. A witch can move energy to create any life of choice. A witch knows how to see signs in everything around her. A witch uses her potions and spells to give healing and hope to all who seek her guidance using her gifts for the good of all, to heal and nourish. And perhaps your voice is going to be healing. I do see that with the Night Song card, okay? So use your words wisely in this situation, okay? Manifest what you want, not what you don't want. It's essentially what I'm hearing here. <laughs> manifest, <laughs> manifest what you want, all right? Even if it means you need to change an idea about a person or situation, okay? Especially if you're getting any kind of new news or information. All right. There's a change here that's beautiful. All right. Have a good one, Taurus. Hopefully that helps. Have a good one. Bye. All right, Gemini, sun, moon, rising. Let's see what's going on this week for you. Energy spirit, please and thank you for Gemini Sun Moon Rising. Oh, love it. Invisibility, authenticity. Ooh, I think you might have to kind of be between Boaz and Yaquin at this time. Those are the pillars on the High Priestess card. All right, let's see here. Let's see. Okay, we're going to have to just do this. All right. You know that feeling you sometimes have that someone is watching you. You cannot see them, yet you have a distinct feeling that someone is there. All the hairs are up on the back of your neck. You think you see something in the corner of your eye, but when you turn, there is nothing to be seen but air. This is the power of invisibility. The indirect fear and the covert threat of having to fight something we cannot see. Humans have a strong visual sense, so it's no wonder that we are uneasy about things we cannot see. The ancients believed that all manner of creatures, mythical and physical, and of course the deities, could make themselves invisible at will. When we consider that some animals are camouflaged so well by their coats or behavior, that sometimes even if we are 
looking straight at them, they are hard to see with their environment that invisibility isn't such a far-fetched concept. In many cultures, the idea of beings who could watch us undetected were, and still are, common. Jinns, angels, nature spirits, the fae, even practitioners of magic, such as witches, are said to have the power to appear and disappear at will. Later in literature and then movies, invisibility becomes a common power, and we now have fictional superheroes that are invisible, and even cloaks of invisibility. The concept of invisibility is a double-edged sword. While it is a powerful tool to be, gain, to be able to gain information or assist while no one sees, individuals using it are privy to information that may not be meant for them, and it may be taken out of context or unethically. It is a power of manipulation and easily abused. The idea of hiding away and not being seen is also a big part of the dark side of this concept. We are all born to shine our light out into the world and to take our roles. Hiding our talents, not expressing our true selves, stealing others' ideas or work, or, and being someone else rather than your authentic self are all aspects to consider should this card appear, okay? But what I'm really getting... All right, well, let, let's see. Let's see if this is someone else being a spy or if you kind of need to step back and be a fly on the wall kind of energy. Let's see here. That's what I'm really getting. There may be something about to go down that you need to observe and not really react to. You just need to sort of observe and report, so to speak. All right, Spirit, what's going on here with invisibility for Gemini? Huh, okay, okay. Opportunities. A stranger is about to change your life. Exciting times and plenty of action, plus a special family reunion looks likely for some of you, okay? I love this two-part fortune. All right, so this could be this stranger looking, lurking, right? Waiting for an opportunity to come on in and change your life, right? Biding the time. Let's see. Also be family with the Ten of Pentacles here. Ladies involved. There's some sort of balance. Maybe a choice that has to be made in a circumstance at home or with family or work. One more. Ooh. 10, 10 is here. So that tells me this might actually be closer to the peak of the portal tomorrow, okay? But the shadow side does end on the 24th, so bear that in mind. This is definitely family. Maybe you do need to be a fly on the wall, not say anything, just observe. So you have the sky here, which presages a disappointment, okay? Regarding this lady, so maybe she's the one that's disappointed. The rod near predicts family quarrels. <laughs> it is distant from family wealth, right, with this ten of pentacles here, or the family stability. So there might be something surrounding a pecuniary loss, okay? Eight, 18, and 30, 9, and 3 might be significant to you at this time. All right, let me see if we can get a little bit more. We can identify whoever this lady is or this family for Gemini, please. Hmm. Could be pertaining to a gathering since family reunion looks likely. If there's a special birthday or maybe a Halloween party or something. Maybe there isn't enough money to plan a party. I just heard that as well. With pecuniary losses and it being disappointing. 
three, please. Nine of Pentacles. Emperor, Aries energy. One more. That could be a boss or a dad. Ooh, okay. Three of Cups. It did want to come up in the reverse, even though I'm not reading that with this deck. Normally, what would have been celebrated is not. This could have been a situation where maybe um, this masculine em Emperor Aries energy has left a situation to go be with another situation and thus taking the finances with. So there's a bit of depletion for whatever was being planned here. I also see this as guidance, sort of needing to do it on yourself, do it, do it yourself, right? I definitely feel DIY vibes here, taking charge so that you can celebrate. You might have to get creative or whoever's here might have to get creative, right? Whoever's in this disappointment energy. So that it can still be fun, but you know, on a budget, right? Get one, please. Guidance. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So this deck is awesome. The back side of the cards, when they're all put together and laid out a certain way, actually show you a Ouija board. Well, the no back side showed up. <laughs> so maybe there's going to be a no answer here somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> card number eight eight again might be very significant money is definitely probably impacted by this scenario but that is the light card okay things being illuminated so maybe the truth will be illuminated or maybe something you'll see observing from the sidelines that could be helpful in this situation All right, I'm just gonna read this whole thing. This card represents the entrance point through which creation can manifest itself into the world. It encompasses potential and purity without limitations of shape, capable of illuminating and feeding anything it comes into contact with, like the, a sun, with generosity and vitality. A source of pure energy feeds and lights your journey. Proceed in your projects without hesitation. Any shadow will be dispelled. So don't worry about whatever this loss is, as I'm getting. There will be light in this tunnel. <laughs> and you will be able to celebrate at the end of this tunnel. All right, final guidance. You might even be the one to shed an idea about it. What can be done cheaply? Maybe you'll see something where there's a waste somewhere else that could be reallocated, right? Number seven, Black Cat. We've got a air of protection here. Number seven. There is a curious journey into the depths of the unknown. Hidden so deep that only the brave will gracefully return with light in their eyes and shadow leading home. Again, with that light shining on shadow, right? It may seem a little disappointing and dismal, right? With the scythe being there. But there is positivity at the end here. You'll still be able to celebrate. This is also about independence, survival, and grace.
when a black cat comes purring into your reading, I just love the way this is worded. <laughs> You're being asked to find your independence. Okay. Grab some me time so that you can find your footing again. It is easy to get lost in the chaos when you have a lot going on. Taking a step back to see the bigger picture, the invisibility, all right, is the best way to get some fresh ideas about where to go next, how to solve a problem, or how to get out of the funk. Remember, me time doesn't have to be dramatic. Having a 20-minute coffee break at your local coffee shop can be just as rewarding as an all-day staycation. When it comes to me time, choose quality over quantity, always. Black Cat also asks you to learn the power of saying no. We all have to set boundaries and rules. We cannot expect others to know what is okay or not okay without some guidance. Nor can we expect others to know when we have too much on our plates. It's okay to say no. And I do see that with the Ten of Swords here. Something might have to get cut out of the equation, right? And that's where the disappointment can possibly be. Maybe because it's one too many extra things, okay? This isn't a selfish act, and it doesn't mean you don't care. It's a sign of self-respect and will help in the long term. Those in your immediate circle, you cannot give what you do not have. Okay? So if you are this person, all right, maybe you do need to take a step back and kind of reassess the situation where you're investing, okay? Even if it's for that 20-minute coffee break. <laughs> <laughs> or ice cream or whatever <laughs> maybe there's some um thing in this situation that's too expensive about it that's going to be too much over the long term okay i do see some longevity here with these pentacles here this could very well be a birthday party that's being planned <laughs> all right there you go hopefully that helps have a good one bye all right, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising. All right, Spirit, what do you have for Cancer for this week? Keeping all these retrogrades in mind. <laughs> all right, there's just so much energy going on. All right. Lady de los Muertos, that's Katrina. Acceptance and equality. Okay. I know she's got more than one meaning. Some kind of ending, perhaps? Okay. The iconic Lady of Death with a pale skull face like skull-like face, <laughs> zombie eyes, and rich red funeral flowers in her hair has become one of the most recognizable, recognizable symbols of Halloween and El Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. The original model for this flamboyant lady of death can be traced back to the ancient Aztec goddess Mixtecacuatli. As time went on, the figure remained balanced between beauty and horror and morphed into the lady of the dead, and eventually into the more modern graphic figure of Katrina. It is also reported that the identity of the original Katrina was based on women who were very rich and had everything they wanted in this life. Yet death takes everyone equally. So it was a reminder that no matter how beautiful, rich, popular, or famous you were, in the end, death takes all. The Mexican culture has a long-standing history of laughing at death and seeing it as just another aspect of life. In some ways, death is the last taboo in many Western cultures. We tend to hide away our dying, and some of us may never even see the body of someone who has passed in our whole lives. But this was a much more common occurrence in the past. Acknowledging that death is a natural process that will enter everyone's life at some time, and that perhaps until then, we can choose to be life-affirming, takes away much of the fear. Take a light approach to a situation initially, and it may work out for the better. If you're holding on to something that does not serve you any longer, in particular material things, simplify and let it go. 
Okay. Let's see what this is exactly about for you during this week. Spirit just may need may need you to kind of decide what needs to go, okay? Or think about what's not serving you anymore. It could be even as something as, you know, uncomplicated as a grudge, right? That's something you can clear out clutter-wise. All right, one, please. Health. Maybe there's something in your diet, okay? An excellent time to start an exercise program or diet. Many new friendships are on the horizon, okay? So this could be something about just a toxic friend or maybe just a toxic thing you eat all the time, okay? Since we missed it. Future, you may travel or host overseas travelers soon. Either way, great social fun awaits. And friendships underneath that. So maybe friendship too, okay? Or maybe it's a friend that has an unhealthy habit. Let's see here. Queen of Cups, that could very well be you. That is Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, Feminine Energy. Whether you're male or female. A nurturer. A therapist kind of type. Maybe a good friend to cry on. And Four of Wands here. Let me just check these numbers. <laughs> okay. All right. So we have the anchor, the ring, and the key. Okay. The anchor denotes successful ventures in business and love. This could even be friendship. Okay. The ring, when to the right of a person, is an unerring indication of rich and happy marriage, but lying left, disappointment, and love. It is lying to the right of this successful venture, okay? But to the left of the Four of Wands and more success. So maybe it's going to be good in one aspect or good for one aspect but not another, okay? And maybe that's kind of what needs to end is the hope for this and aim for this, okay? Now, if this is like something you're consuming diet-wise, um, maybe it's a matter of overconsumption of it. Like maybe you're not as fulfilled with having too much of it. So maybe starving yourself out a little bit here with the Five of Pentacles energy is a good idea. That's essentially just feeling left out in the cold or being without, right? So you can kind of like hold back on that particular, let's say you like to eat, I don't know, cookies every day, but after a few weeks of eating cookies every day, you're not feeling quite, you're feeling sluggish and you just don't feel well. Maybe hold off on eating some cookies every day, right? Maybe treat yourself once a week instead or twice a week, okay? And see how your body recovers from that. As far as friendships are concerned, maybe there had been high hopes that this would be a bestie. <laughs> so I'm definitely seeing that with the four of wands there. Okay. A bestie, but really it's just more going to be acquaintance, you know, or just a close friend, not someone that is, you know, like sisterly or brotherly to you. Okay. And you could be dealing with another cancer Pisces or Scorpio with that queen of cups there. Okay. Go your own way. All right, Nine of Pentacles here.
One more. Come on, Spirit. One more. There we go. Yeah, just to maintain balance, okay? You're going to have some success with this balance, with temperance here. Sagittarius could also be significant to you at this time as well. Um, air more on the kind of the limitation of whatever this consumption, whether it be a friendship or whatever diet this is, okay? Kind of focus on you at the moment. Try not to put too much into something that wants to be successful or can be, but too much of a push, okay? Go easy on it. Initial guidance, please and thank you. 16 with Quetzalcoatl. That breaks down to a 7. Get in there. <laughs> Get in there. All right. That's the feathered serpent. He is also a god of renewal. He's kind of like the Osiris of the Aztec culture. So maybe there is a need to kind of hold off a bit so that you can renew and replenish as well. Learn some new things as well. All right, here we go. God of knowledge, dawn, merchants, the arts, and professions. He is associated with the wind and element of air. He is therefore connected to intellect, education, books, and the invention of the calendar. Do not fear and do not give up. Through perseverance and insistence, you will reach the goal that you desire and that most of all you deserve, okay? So don't feel like you're going to be in lack regarding this situation if you hold back a little bit and just kind of do your own thing, okay? This could be a test of moderation, a test of balance, a test of temperance, right? I just heard, I just saw like test in here. <laughs> Final guidance. Oh, we have the witch number 43 in the reverse. It's about maintaining and manifesting your own magic. Okay. I just, uh, who just had that? Is it Taurus that had that? Taurus might be significant to you. But in the reverse. Okay. There we are. Wisdom and alchemy. When the witch card is in reverse, know that you are more capable, more than capable of manifesting all that you desire. Even if you have not had success with, with spell work in the past. <laughs> and that is, of course, just metaphorical, right? Whatever you're, whatever you're manifesting, right? Putting out there into the universe. Practice makes perfect. So you might need to practice a little bit about something in this situation, okay? Just thinking of food. It takes 30 days to make a habit, 30 days to break a habit, okay? And if it's some kind of condition in a friendship you're not liking, maybe you just kind of need to hold back a little bit and manifest for yourself at this time, okay? Because we do have friendship on board here. A spell that didn't work doesn't mean you aren't powerful or on the wrong path. It could mean that you aren't ready for the spell at this time. You manifest what you are ready to receive. Consider working spells that require a smaller amount of effort or working healing spells to clear out any baggage that may be keeping you from calling in the things you desire. Magic is alchemy and the conditions need to be right to turn your spiritual lead into gold. Keep trying and you will succeed, okay? Hopefully that helps, Cancer. Have a good one. Bye. Hi, Leo. Sun, moon, rising. Let's see what we got for you this week. My tablecloth keeps bunching up. <laughs> All right, Spirit for Leo. What's going on this week that they need to be aware of energy-wise? Overall energy, please.
death. The eternal cycle begins here. Endings leading to new beginnings. Rebirth. All right. Do not be afraid if you pull the death card, as it simply means that something is falling away, or will do so, so you can begin strongly... Am I reading that right? So you can begin strongly afresh. <laughs> there is great power in this clearing. If you pull this card at Halloween, particularly, which it is coming up, I think it's at the end of this week, Samhain Portal, okay? This message is stronger still, and you should actively celebrate this new beginning. Death is a part of life. Make friends with death. Don't allow your fears and grief to bring unnecessary pain. All right? Go with the flow on it. Let's see what's happening. What's ending? What's what's beginning? What's ending? <laughs> what's this about, Spirit? What's falling away here for Leo? Travel. Long-distance communication will open up your life. Exciting experiences for singles and career advancement for others. Huh. Loaded, loaded, loaded. Love it. Let's see. Something falling away that's long distance. All right. Let's see what this is specifically about here. That's a few things for folks. It could be also just a little bit of tidbit for any Leos that are single, exp exciting experiences, career advancement. What could be falling away is a job that doesn't pay as well, and because you got promoted, this could also be relocation too, changing up. That could be your new beginning. Like for work. Third place. Number 26 with the park here. Nine of Wands. Seven of Swords. Number 25 with the Clouds. And Seven of Wands. Number 20 with the lilies. The clouds are darkened towards this park. So this could be an old friendship. The park foretells a new love when near, if distant false friends. So whether it's love or friendship, maybe something's falling away with that. Um, there's a sense of strength and guardedness as well as perseverance with the nine of wands here. With clouds, dark sword side that way. Divorce or breakup, right? But over here, it's towards happiness, and you do have that as well. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of family sorrow surrounded by clouds. So there might be a little bit of a hiccup. There might be something that's a little disconcerting that's ending or falling away in a family situation here. Um, now, this could be soul family. This could be friend family, whoever you consider family, right? I'm really getting the vibe of like a friend breakup, a dude divorce. <laughs> All right. It could be something like that. 26 breaks down to an 8, 25, 7, 20, and 2, okay? Those numbers could be significant. Let's see. So I'm feeling guided to say August, July, February might be significant.
Maybe there's been difficulty with it. This could be a long distance friendship too that's just falling apart, right? Or some kind of connection. Seven of Pentacles. Maybe something you've invested in heavily. That you're gonna have, or you need to invest in this new beginning. It's faded. Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Just seeing what else I can see here for you. See, February is Aquarius, Pisces, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. Energy is here. Okay, we've got something new happening on the horizon. From having needed to leave behind something, okay? This could have been fresh or will happen this week. Just know that there's a new beginning on the horizon that's faded for you, okay? wonder what journey you're going on with this travel card. Card number 18. Breaks down to a 9. I will move this forward a little bit. Bear with. It's been a while since I've worked this deck. Card 18, emotions, sentiments fluid and changeable like water. They are at the aspect that characterizes this card both positively and negatively. Our emotions are the main source of our moods, our joys and pains. They are part of us that places us in receptive and communicative position in regards to the external world. ready to embrace it with open arms. In negative terms, however, they can lead us to close and isolate ourselves from everything around us, transforming the initial multicolored source into tears. Remember to put your heart into what you're doing. Otherwise, the results will be exclusively tied to the satisfaction of your ego and will stagnate in a swamp. In a sense, don't get too moody about something, okay? It might be a little disheartening, but have a little hope here. You need a leap of faith with that fool card, okay? Maybe check out one of the other placements with what this is pertaining to. If you're coming from sun, moon, rising at the very least. This could have, this definitely feels like Pluto retrograde energy, actually. Pluto is about ending, so you might want to check your Pluto placement, okay? And this might be um, brought on, actually, by the 1010 energy. We do have nines and sevens here. Okay, a lot of sevens, actually. <laughs> Seven might be really significant. You might be seeing sevens, okay? Now let's get bridge shuffle for Leo, please. Black cat in the reverse. Talk about card number seven. I should actually have that up. All right, hold on. So you can see it better. There's a curious journey into the depths of the unknown. Hidden so deep that only the brave will gracefully return with light in their eyes and shadow leading home. One more sec. Let me get there. <laughs> Independence, survival, and grace. It showed up in the reverse. Black hat in reverse reminds you that you have another chance to get things right. A black hat has nine lives, but again with the nines, right? 
but you never run out of chances to start afresh. So this may have been something you had tried before going into whatever this is, and now is like divine timing to go forward and do it again. Trust that there is a grand plan that will not let you down. Take the leap of faith. <laughs> Take the leap of faith. And don't be afraid to jump high into that tree. <laughs> you may fall, but then again, you might not. If you do, you'll just have another chance to get back up again. And Leo's... You Leos are big kitties, right? <laughs> Maybe it's time to go take a leap of faith, right? <laughs> Into that tree, wherever the universe is taking you, okay? So wherever you're coming from, don't dwell on it, right? Don't get too meaty that you dwell on it, right? The em emotions are there. Take those steps forward. Invest in this new beginning. Wherever spirit is leading you, wherever your spirit is leading you, it's going to be awesome. It could be, too, that there was something in this circumstance you were supposed to learn and you had learned it. Right? And now it's time to move on. It's time to skedaddle. Okay? Could also be that maybe it was supposed to prepare you for whatever's to come. I wonder what it is. Stay tuned. We'll pull again. All right? Have a good one. Bye. All right, Virgo, let's see what we got for you this week. Sun, moon, rising spirit for Virgo, please. And be sure to check your other placements too, if it resonates or maybe there's more hints in the other readings. Who knows? Let's see what comes up, right? All right. Virgo, sun, moon, rising. What's, hap what's happening? Overall energy, please. Midnight. The most magical hour of all. Okay, so something's definitely going to happen during the witching hour. And that would be the peak of the witching hour. Maybe in your dream state, you might get some communication. Perhaps some ancestral energy will visit. Let's see. Something happening at a peak. Allow yourself to relax in the benevolent darkness of midnight. You may feel this is your darkest hour, but know that the light will return. The dawn always follows the darkest night. For those that might be going through the dark night, this might be for you, okay? I usually think of that with this card. Know, too, that it is important to recognize that we all have darkness within us. So shadow work might be needed, okay? This might have something to do with that. Just as we have light, and this isn't something to hide from. In some Christian traditions, let's just read from the beginning. The middle of the night, it might mean something for you, okay? Midnight is the hour in which it is believed that ghosts, witches, ghouls, and magic are most likely to be active. Transition times, such as noon, the time between tides or even dark moon, are traditionally powerful times for magical transformation. In some Christian traditions, the witching hour is seen as 3 a.m. because it is the opposite, the, it is the opposite to the time that Jesus is said to have died at 3 p.m. But there is some consensus that midnight is the time of greatest magic, particularly around Halloween, which we're coming up on. As soon as the clock strikes midnight on Halloween, it is said that spirits flow forward through the veil and if benevolent, bring positive messages. If not so benevolent, they are mischievous and play tricks at best, or at worst, cause havoc. And you'll know the difference, okay? So you may be experiencing that at this time. You may be awakening to those senses. So let's see what's, it, what's this about for you, okay? Maybe it'll be easily triggerable right now especially with the darkness being mentioned, okay? Just be patient with yourself. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Surprise. A disappointment will be followed by a pleasant surprise. An invitation could bring love to those searching. 
I was just thinking about the light at the end of the tunnel and I know exactly what it is. <laughs> Hold on, I'm asking. Can I spoil it? Spoiler alert? Okay. <laughs> the surprise is that you're the light at the end of the tunnel the whole time. <laughs> so be patient with yourself. Okay, heal what you need to heal in the darkness. Okay. Whatever wounds come up, and I totally screwed up this deck. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Whatever comes up, go heal, okay? Just be patient with yourself. Explore. All right, there may be something, some messages coming through paranormally um, or from your divine self, okay? Your higher self might be trying to come through right now to guide you, okay? Don't be alarmed. It's new. It's different. <laughs> It shows up in all kinds of ways, whether it be through signs or synchronicities. Um, it could be visual. Any of the clairs could pop, okay? Each one of our journeys is different. Our abilities are different. Clear cognizance, clear aliens. Basically, your six, your sixth sense is based on your five senses, right? Like the same concept, but um, ethereal, ethereally. That's the word I'm thinking of. Okay. So smell, taste, feeling, emotion of others. You might be sensing other people's energy too. This is a time to kind of observe how you're receiving this new experience. Okay. There you go. All right. Three, please. Ace of Wands is going to happen quickly too. Uh, Aries Leo Sagittarius energy might be significant for you. So wherever you have that in your chart, specifically with Uranus, Chiron, Neptune, shoot, practically all of these. Okay. Chiron, Neptune, Saturn, Uranus, or Jupiter. Okay. Whatever fire energy you got there. All right. Might pertain to this as well. Okay. North node. Just heard North node. Okay. Especially with the rose there. Okay. Keep going. 31 breaks down to a four. Ten of pentacles. That's your energy. Eight. Okay. Seven of pentacles. That's investment. So invest in the tangible right now for yourself. Okay. You might have to bulk up your own personal health. This could be your health, right? Mind, body, soul, health. 31, 4, 8, 38, 11, manifestation, nice. Eight's all about abundance as well. Four, you're protected. Uh, so you're on this journey, okay? You don't know if this is sunrise or sunset yet, but with midnight here, it might be sunset, sunrise, right? The dawn is coming. Or you could be looking at the sunset. <laughs> so whichever direction you're faced right now in this tunnel, if you're faced where you came from or where you're going, okay? If you invest, whatever it seems disappointing will dissipate. You'll get stronger with the light, okay? Flames on the hearth indicate good fortune and neutralizes the evil of near unlikely, unlikely, unlucky cards and increases the value of lucky ones, okay? You do have a bit of luck here, so it could go either way depending on how you respond to it, okay? Get some scent and more take guidance. This is actually a really good time to have the dark night. The energy of the earth is a little bit more receptive to helping you grow, helping you see things and develop your clairs. Beltane's also another good time of year. This is definitely a good time of year for things to end and have new beginnings. I'm definitely really feeling someone going through a dark night here. I feel I feel blessed. <laughs> it's been three years since mine, so I know it. <laughs> now I've actually had three ego deaths in my life. Okay. I did not go all the way down the tunnel the first two. The first was when I was 12. 
The next one was when I was, oh, don't even, that's hilarious. 24, 12 years later. <laughs> and then more recently, it's not exactly 12 after that, no. It took a little longer. Um, this time around, I was able to recognize I didn't want to feel that way again, right? So I did everything I could to feel better and be joyous and be more high vibrational. I mean, at the time, I didn't call it high vibration. I just wanted to be happy, right? So I healed whatever was bothering me as best as I could. And I had to search high and low for different methods. Of course, I went the traditional routes. You know, I was pretty egoic back then. Of course, I went to therapy, mental health practitioners thinking that's the problem. Nope, this has nothing to do with your ego. This is soul stuff. You got to fix your aura. You got to heal it. Okay. All right, let's pull one. So browse. Okay. Feel intuitively guided. Let your soul speak to you through this process. 29, I think that's art. Get creative. That will help you heal your sacral chakra as well. It's also about putting things together in a unique way, right? It's sort of like um, the creative concept of alchemy, almost. Art, us, art allows us to create a narrative about the world we live in to make it less eph ephemeral, <laughs> ephemeral. I can't even speak right now. To communicate our highest and most noble thoughts to others, such as those that come from emotions through the use of intellect. So this is all about balancing your heart and your head at the moment, okay? It allows us to give us give a comprehensible form to otherwise impenetrable concepts. Your project has taken on an important scope, and this project could be your awakening, right? And it's necessary to communicate it and transmit it creatively to the outside. So however you document, as I say, that 1111 manifestation, it's time to manifest, all right? However you put it pen to paper, thought to paper, okay? If it's a paintbrush, if it's a pen, if it's music, get creative with whatever's going on that you're experiencing, okay? It may be valuable to you later on, all right, as far as your journey. It may show you how far you've come, or you may see something in your notes later on that make more sense as to what you need to do next, okay? You may be channeling in some way, shape, or form. I definitely see that here. You may be a free drawer, since art came up, or a free writer, okay? Whatever it is, invest in it. It's for your health, too. Final guidance. Too many. Just one, please, for Virgo. There we go. Dark moon number 13 in the reversed. 13 breaks down to a four. Again, you have fours on deck, 11's on deck. Get to that page. In the dark of your heart lives new breath, waiting for you to release its ghost. So you have control. You are not powerless. You're about to learn how powerful you really are throughout this whole process, okay? There's so much extra stuff in this deck. I love it. New beginnings and letting go. The flip side to the dark moon is giving yourself time to rest so that you can be prepared for your next cycle in life. Often that means letting go and releasing things that have no place in your life's new era. Take this time to focus on creating something new 
but do not act on it just yet. So take your time, like a painting. It's not something you do in two seconds, right? <laughs> you might want to build its concept first, right? Before you polish it up, okay? Allow yourself to focus on new ideas and be sure to let your imagination run wild. Brainstorming, sketching, that's what I'm hearing, okay? The best way to get over something old is to get excited about something new, okay? There you go, Virgo. Hopefully that helps. Have a good one. Bye. All right, Libra, sun, moon, rising. All right, we'll just start with those. See what's up for you at this time. Of course, check your other placements if you like. Whatever's going on in your life right now, whatever, whichever planetary pertains to it. For example, if you're working, if you work, if you're worried about career, education, that sort of thing, part of fortune, relationships, Venus, your spiritual journey, North Node. All right. What's the overall energy for Libra, please, at this time, Spirit, this week? All right, you have zombie control. This is particularly loaded. Somebody trying to control you. Is somebody trying to shape what you, they want from you? Let's see here. What's going on here? What's this zombie? And I'll get the book out because it is a loaded card. <laughs> is something becoming reanimated? One, please. Thank you. Positive work outcomes. Consistent efforts will bring rewards and a major purchase is worth making. Something having to do with work and spending. Let's see here. And control issues. <laughs> Let's see. This week. Could be something small. Maybe somebody's expecting you to pay for something. be responsible for something that costs something. We're expecting you to invest and you're unsure about whether or not it's a good investment. Let's see. Eight of Cups, the cat, number 36. Nine might be significant. Ace of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy. Card 11 with the Fox here. I mean, there's a trust issue. And Queen of Swords. This could be your energy. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. 42 breaks down to a 6. Alright, something's near completion here with a 9. <clears throat> Manifesting some sort of um, return to purpose. Maybe there had been a distraction here at work, right? Whatever your work is. This could also just be some sort of project you're working on or uh, self-employment. Maybe there's something in your environment, right? Maybe you're feeling you're investing too much into something. There's some sort of obsession here with this control energy. The cat indicates flattery. The fox augurs distrust of acquaintances who are seeking to betray you. It's in the middle somewhere. So there's a there's a a mole in the middle. <laughs> What's that phrase? Amour is a sign that someone is looking at you with great love and longing. I get the sense of love bombing going on in a situation with that. All right. 
So maybe this might make sense with zombie here. I'm going to go ahead and go into it. It's time to look at the concept of control. Do you want to control everything, leaving little to free expression? Do you choose partners who are not your equal so that they are more easily manipulated and changed to your liking? Or do you allow that to happen to you? If that's something that you have experienced before, you may have been tested by this other energy doing the same thing, okay? If you are not living your most authentic life, it's time to look at why and how to change that. Okay. There's definitely a new beginning here. This could be about self-care and need to move on to the unknown with the eight of cups there for you and being true to yourself with the queen of swords. Maybe even have to like standing up for yourself. I'm getting that vibe. Definitely for yourself energy here with whomever this is. So let's talk about this fox. What is it that's not trustworthy? <laughs> Who or what? Get the feeling it has something to do with surrounding your work environment, whatever that is. Okay, whatever you deem work. Valid purpose type thing. Let's just get a few here, Spirit. Okay, we got two. All right. Ten of Swords. Okay, that could be a Gemini energy. We also have Star here. Needing to heal. Maybe there had been some devastation with another air sign perhaps you do have aquarius and gemini here oh and pisces okay uh maybe this is just really stemming from some fear okay and worry maybe it had been a triggering triggering thing maybe you had hope right that this circumstance would have been more positive than it was right but then you kind of realized you were it's just not for you, right? Like what you value as far as what's controlling you, okay? And this is a good opportunity to heal that, right? See through it, okay? See through the pain, what it's supposed to teach you. How it's supposed to inspire you. It could just be a situation that you had been devastated by and now you don't trust going forward. Remember, bringing old baggage into new circumstances is not very fair, right? The new people didn't, didn't do anything to deserve that. So maybe you do need to heal something from the past that's dragging forward. 11.22, as I said that, okay. Making that decision, that balance. Okay, self-care is here, okay? It's easy to kind of hold on to stuff and just worry if people are going to do the same thing to you in the future, especially if you're just so used to being on the receiving end of it your whole life, right? I get that. But it's important to discern what's fear and what's truth, right? As Queen of Swords, we know how to distinguish truth. <laughs> but we can be too much in the head, too, right? I'm seeing a lot of cups here. You might need to feel this one out, okay? Especially with the moon being there. Card number 31 breaks down to a four. This is the celebration card. You are protected. There is going to be something to celebrate through this. Take action while constantly bearing the past in mind without being afraid of having to change your ideas even drastically. Who got this card? It's either Aries or Taurus, I think, got this. That might be significant to someone. Uh, check out where Aries and Taurus is in your chart, whichever placement, okay? Maybe more specific to that aspect of your world, okay?
As the tree that renews its leaves but keeps its roots, we must always have the courage to renew our ideas while maintaining the principles that have guided us and that were passed on to us by our ancestors. I love that. There is definitely something to celebrate, but you just got to change your mindset on it, right? Tap more into those emotions and feel it through for healing. All right, let's get some healing guidance, spirit. And let me sow an oracle. Ritual 33. Love it. So threes might be very significant at this time as a sign or synchronicity. It's also a sign of good news arriving and protection from all the higher ups. Okay. Can you feel them, wild creatures linked by the very blood you will spill into your craft? A ritual of dedication to self and those whose gazes hold fire, but whose whispers carry you softly through the unknown. And healing harsh wounds is definitely unknown, right? <laughs> but you may actually be get some sort of aha moment an epiphany through this as well all right that came up in the upright this deck is still very sticky book is dedication and harnessing ritual is the very foundation of a witch's practice it is the doorway to the world's unseen and a rite of passage it is the deliberate honoring of the wise ones who've walked before us, the spiritual ones who watch over us. It is also a dedication to self, a place where you can find yourself in your practice and harness the power within. Ritual is a dedication to your craft and is about you showing up for things that are essential to you, be it going to work. So this could be involving work as well. If you're a light worker, I heard that. Definitely in this realm here. Organizing your kids or hitting the gym. Spiritual rituals are no different. If anything, they are even more critical than the day-to-day -day stuff of life. It is important to take time to honor your magic and the magic of those you call upon. By doing so, you are making a choice. This came with the twos, right? Earlier, manifestation and choice. If you have pulled ritual, it is because you are being drawn to honor your magic in a more profound way. You are being asked to explore your power as a witch truly and to find the proper time and energy to develop your craft. Making time to honor each step of ritual magic through intention is like sending out a beacon saying, I'm here and ready to own my power. The power that will be noticed, the powers that will that that B will notice <laughs> your efforts and begin to give you more power as a reward. Okay, whether that be your higher self. And of course, which shaman, light worker, all the same, right? There you go, Libra. Hopefully this helps. Stay tuned. Follow your other placements. See if there's any other guidance that might be helpful. Okay. Bye.